Hey, welcome to The Conversation. You're listening to Andy Mason, and this is authentic conversations around the messy intersection of faith, family, and business. And it's brought to you by Heaven in Business, where we connect, train, and activate you to partner with God at work and engage in the well-being of the city you serve. You can find more on heavenandbusiness.com, where you'll find the blog, this podcast, and the YouTube channel, Heaven in Business. So today, I want to talk about how to find wise counselors. Over the last few weeks, we've talked about how to stay strong, how to stay focused, how to not be in Jim Collins' book, How the Mighty Fall, and recognizing also that some of us, like me, tend to draw back, hide, shrink back because we feel uncomfortable or vulnerable. And yet, everything I'm hearing God say is step up, Exodus 33, 1, get going and I will go with you. It's time to step up, stand up, speak out and actually advance what we are doing in and through the the businesses that we work in and serve. But how do we do that? One of the keys is having wise counselors around your life. It keeps you strong, stops you from being stupid, making stupid decisions, but wisdom is found in the multitude of counselors. So how do you practically find those people? I've got a couple of stories for you, some real practical keys, and then some steps that you can go about to find some. And then finally, an invitation for you, if you listen to the end. So where and how do I find these? Firstly, a story. When we came from New Zealand to the United States, brand new in a new country, didn't know anybody, uh, I think one of the keys to finding wise counselor is prayer. Help me, Jesus, is probably the most powerful prayer. And actually wanting advice and being teachable is a key to finding wise counselors. Then I would meet with different people. And over a very short period of time, some people kind of latched onto me because of what I was doing. And they said, we like what you're doing. We can see the value in that. Uh, Let's do it together. So what I found is some business leaders, some city leaders, some people that didn't agree with my philosophies, but they liked the results, both in the church and atheists in the community. Both of them, same kind of approach, and yet they loved the results. So they started to gather around. Now, as a result of that, and out of my own sense of, I don't really know what I'm doing, I feel inadequate, what I did is I deferred to some of these people. They were much more... Uh, senior in years, more mature, more experienced in their business capacity. And so what I did is I hastily brought together an advisory team, which I thought was the wisest thing to do. And it was, except I wasn't ready. What I did is I deferred to them rather than owning what God had given me to do and receiving that wise counsel, assimilating it and processing it, but being really clear on what is it I'm building, how am I building, who am I going to build with, and not to be too hasty of bringing people into our inner circle. What happened with that? Well, for the first couple of years, it was actually fantastic. Great counsel, great advice, and it became clearer and clearer that there were different agendas and different focuses at the table with these wise counselors that were around me. Until one day, we had a meeting and we got to an impasse. It just was not going anywhere. I was getting frustrated. They could tell that I was getting frustrated. They wanted me to delay an event that we were doing. And yet I knew that I knew that I knew that I'd got these speakers lined up. I had to launch it even if it didn't look like the numbers were good. I knew we had to launch it now. That was my conviction. We're going round and round and round in circles. And then one of the men had to leave. His name was Rick. He gets up and I follow him out because I had to leave at the same time. And I walk down the hallway and he says, Andy, you just wasted $500 of my time. And I'm like, oh man, like, I'm so sorry. What could I have done differently? And he said, nothing. There's just different agendas under the table. That is one of the most valuable lessons that I have learned. That in seeking wise counsel, be aware of of different agendas. And if you don't know what you are building, how you're building, what the non-negotiable components of that are, if you're not prepared to stand up for what you know that you're building, no amount of wise counsel will be really, really helpful in the long run. So I had to come back a step and realize that I enabled some of the dysfunction and the agendas at that table. 
Now, some of those people I'm still walking with really closely, and they became not only closer friends, others, when I disagreed with them, they did not like that at all, which is actually a really good test of a wise counselor. Can you disagree, push back both ways, rather than they have a position to better speak into your life, and it's one way. That's probably not going to be good in the long run. So I learned a ton. Now, fast forward to today. That's about 10 years later. We've built a lot. I'm much more secure and confident in what God has got us to build, what the business model is and how we're going about it. I still need wise counselors. And what I've done over, over the years is sought out individuals and right now, I'm in the process of pulling back together an advisory team, a board of advisors, a governing board. You could point, point different directions for the purpose of keeping me on track and actually staying focused and making healthy decisions. Where I've had those people as individuals, I'm now actually going full circle back around and establish that in our life, Janine and I, with Heaven and Business. So let's go back a step. What are some of the keys that you can apply to find wise counsel. Well, the first thing is, I love this scripture. It's in Romans 16, 19, and it says, Be excellent at what is good and innocent of evil, and the God of peace will crush Satan under your feet. So I take, there's about five keys in this that I would say, run these through as you're seeking somebody with wise counsel. Number one, excellent at what is good. I'm not looking to a 20-year-old for marriage advice. I'm not looking for someone who's 18, 19, 20-year-old for business advice. I'm looking for someone who has a reputation, not just in my echo chamber, but a real, a real reputation in the craft, the skill, the ability that I'm looking for advice in. If I'm looking for counsel, I look to somebody who is a professional, a trained counselor. If I'm looking for uh, accounting advice, then I look for a professional. How do you know you found one? Real practical. What are their reviews? What do people say about them? Do they have references? If I'm looking right now for somebody to help us build out a web platform, I don't just sign up for the person that says yes. I say, I want to check out your references. Show me your work. I want to know that it's good. Are they excellent at what is good? Are they gifted at their craft? Have they proven that over time? Has it been tested? So that's number one. Are they excellent at what is good? Number two, are they innocent of evil? What does this mean? It means godly character proven over time. Look at their marriage. Look at their children. Look at how they treat the seemingly insignificant people around them. How do they treat your assistant? How do they treat the janitor? How do they treat the people in the room that aren't necessarily going to advance their cause? What are they like? Are they truly humble? Do they promote others? When you're around them, do you feel elevated in status or dim diminished, devalued? And when you leave, you feel like you're less than, smaller than, then stay away. Innocent of evil means I have grace on my lips and a pure heart. When, when people hear me speak, they feel elevated in status. They feel lifted up. They feel encouraged to be able to move forward. And I have no agenda for you other than you prosper and you fully fulfill the plan and purposes of God for your life. Run that through and be aware of it. And you can assess that. Number one, excellent is God, what is good. Number two, innocent of evil. Number three, it's in the God of peace has crushed Satan under their feet. So do they have an evidence, a current evidence of their walk with God? What are they hearing God say? What does that look like? Are they part of a local body or are they offended and separated and isolated? He who isolates himself seeks his own. So where are they a part of something that is bigger than them? Now for you, uh, it may not be that that's as important for me. It is critical because I'm building a partnership with God. Ultimately, for me, success is friendship with God. So if they don't have a current, ongoing, and growing friendship with Him, I'm really not interested in listening to what they've got to say. So such a critical. I don't just want principles. I want the prince. I want the wisdom that comes from God and God alone. 
and we listen to godly practice. We listen to best practice and best principles, but I'm listening for the voice of God. So I want to know, where's the evidence of that around your life? So that's number three. Number four, do they have wrinkles? Now, you might laugh at this one, but I have come to see again and again and again over time is uh, people that are seasoned. Uh, I don't want a freshman, a private, leading me into battle. I want someone who is proven, who is tested, who's been there before. This kind of ties into number five is do they have body scars? So I'm looking for wrinkles and body scars. They're mature. They're seasoned. They've seen the cycles of life, and they can give me a perspective that you just don't have when you're 20 or 30 years old. When you're 50, you've seen things come and go. You've seen fads and fashions and leaders and governments. You've seen things change, and you have a perspective and a depth and a history where you can help people that are just fresh or new or coming into this. And body scars, I'm looking for someone that's had a battle. If you've never had a challenge, a difficulty, opposition, then like your advice, it's not tested, it's not proven, but I'm looking for people that have got body scars, they've walked through difficulty, adversity, challenge, they might have been divorced, but they've worked through it and learned them back together and their marriage is better as a result. They might have been through bankruptcy, but as they went through it, they've learned things and they're applying and they're alive now and they've got a track record after that that would prove they learned something from it and they're applying it and they're growing as a result. I'm looking for body scars. So when you're in a challenge or, or a opposition or difficulty, it's like you get wounded. And when that first happens, it's like a knife in you. It's like it hurts, it's painful, you're bleeding everywhere. What I'm looking for with someone over time is that the knife's no longer there and it's not oozing pus or septic or toxic or offense. If that's the case, don't listen to them because it'll get on you also. You can find somebody else. So what are those things? Excellent, what is good, innocent of evil, a experience, current experience walking with God, wrinkles, they've got seasoned life experience, and body scars without anything toxic oozing out. If you'll apply those five things, that will set you up to succeed with some really great people around you. So let's pivot a little bit and say, so where can you find these people? Uh, like, I'm wanting that, but okay, wh where do I even look? So first thing is proven professionals. How? These are the ones that you're going to pay for. Uh, I've got a lawyer. I've got an accountant. I've got people around me that I pay for. I pay for workplace prayer. Bob Perry, I pray. He's skilled at his craft, proven over time, and I pay him not just to pray, but actually for godly counsel that I get to walk with over time. So these are proven professionals and be prepared to pay. Look around, again, look at the reviews, look at the reputation, look at what people say about them in the community and you'll find pretty soon, are they authentic, real? Do Are they good at what they do? Because that's what I'm gonna do. Typically, you get what you pay for. For. So make sure you pay for it. Now, there's a ton of things you can get for free, but these ones you pay for, pay for and pay well. Number two, business network and development groups. We've just moved to the east coast of the United States. I don't know anybody in the region. So how do I go about finding professionals, professionals locally? Well, I just went along to a BNI, Business Networking International Group. These are groups of people that meet you pay to be a part of it on an ongoing basis, but they're proven professionals and you can ask people, who do they know? And you find out very, very quickly who's good, who's not good, and you get the reputation. That person that sold us our house, the real estate agent, he was referred from somebody that I trust on the West Coast. So when we moved, that real estate agent has passed on so many referrals to us. I've built a reputation with him and I can trust who he will refer to me. Now, when I pick up the phone and call somebody, I'm looking for advice, I'm looking for counsel, I will still test it out, check out the references, run them through that grid of what's important for me for what I'm needing advice for, but you can do that. So number one, proven professionals. Number two, uh, business network and development groups. Uh, in your city, you'll find that there's an economic development corporation. There's the Chamber of Commerce. There's all of these different places. Go and talk to those people. And when someone's name gets comes up again and again and again and again, seek that 
person out. Ask for their wise counsel, input, advice, and you can trust them because they're getting pointed to from every direction as this is somebody that you can trust. Next one, city fathers and mothers. That is not a position. That is a function. That's like what I just mentioned. You know, if you talk to the real estate agent, who do you recommend in, in accounting? Who do you recommend in legal? Who do you recommend to be uh, like a business coach or an advisor or a mentor? Who is really, really good at it? Maybe they're not a mentor or a coach, but maybe they are an outstanding business leader. Who would you just ask those questions? Who do you know that is the best at? And then you seek that person out, take a risk, ask if you can take them out to lunch and tell them, I'm new to the area, I'm new to this business, I'm growing in my business, I've heard that you're outstanding at what you do, and I'd love to buy you lunch or buy you a coffee and ask you some questions so that I can learn from what you have done and learn from your story. Now, here's what I know, is what you're doing is actually you're stroking the ego of that person. That is not all bad. That is good. Everybody wants to be able to tell their story and give it away. So when you approach it with confidence like this, you'll be amazed at what happens when you reach out. Number five, uh, number four, seasoned and joyful church members. Uh, jump into a local body of believers. You know, who has been there that's been committed and mature, has been around, has got those body scars and those wrinkles, but they're not just old and wizened, they're old and joyful. They, can, they walk in that. So we've got somebody in Lancaster, it's two hours away, that sees them, that's a professional. I've seen them in their workplace. I've asked questions. Their name comes up all around. And now I can meet with them at sounding board, advice, wise counsel. How did I do that? Because they're a seasoned and joyful church member. I met them at an event. I know where they're from. I can see them in their life, and I know that they can be trusted. Number five, Heaven and Business and other like-minded organizations. Here's the thing. If you jump onto heavenandbusiness.com backslash about, you'll see I've got a bunch of people that I know that I trust that hit those first five categories. Excellent, what is good, innocent of evil. God is crushing Satan under their feet. They're wrinkled. Don't tell them I said that. And they've, and they've got body scars because they've overcome things. I trust them. They will help you grow in your business and in your walk with God. And both Janine and I have either individuals that we're walking with or groups. I've got three groups right now, and there are a couple of vacancies. If you want to personally walk with us or find out what is involved with that, don't hesitate to email contact at heavenandbusiness.com. And if we can't help you, we'll refer someone that we know and trust that will. What's the point? There's so much for you to do. So much for you to grow and so much for you to learn. I don't want to finish with this really cool story. I was working with a businessman in a particular country. Uh, he was in a photocopier sales company. And on the side, he had this business idea that was literally a billion dollar idea. It was a God idea. It was phenomenal, the story. So I'm walking with him as he's building out this billion dollar idea. Now, he's a photocopier sales company. Salesman. So he doesn't have a huge amount of experience in building a billion dollar business. Now, neither do I. So as we're talking, he was blaming his business partners for what was going on, the delays. We're going around and around and around circles. And finally, I start to confront him, knowing that I could lose my relationship with him, but I'd rather tell him the truth and lose our friendship rather than he sabotage his life for the sake of a blind spot. So I tell him the truth, I'm pushing, and he's pushing back, saying, oh, you just sided with them. We go forward, backwards, and, and I say, no, this is you. You're the center of the problem. And I just laid out really hard, and I got tears in my eyes now, because I know that this is either gonna go really good or really bad, and it's feeling like it's really bad. Well, he starts to listen, and I just get onto this roll. This, this, this is what you need to do. And actually what you need is you need to somebody that's going to help you mentor you in a billion dollar business. Now, and out of my mouth comes, now close your eyes. God's going to show you the face of somebody that you need to go and talk to that's in your life right now. Afterwards, he tells me, yeah, Andy, I didn't really believe you, but you know, just going with it, I closed my eyes kind of just to go along with the conversation. 
he was still struggling with, I'm just being hit with a baseball bat by Andy, and I'm not sure if I like this or not. So he closes his eyes and instantly sees the face of someone in his local church, get this, that he didn't like. Why didn't he like them? Because sales copy guy was a spontaneous, uh, effervescent, charismatic guy, salesy, and the guy that God just showed the face to him was very detailed, very focused, very structured, and was an executive in a billion dollar global company. So my friend, the very next day, reaches out and says, hey, would you be willing to, to his, the, the face of the person that God showed him, said, would you be willing to walk with me and help me grow this company? That person said, of course, two years ago, I got a prophetic word that I'd be walking with you and I was just waiting for you to ask. What's the point? There's people waiting for you to ask if you will reach out. Not only that, but that businessman from a billion dollar company within one week found that the business partners of my friend were actually ripping him off, taking money and putting it elsewhere. And so that conversation turned into saving a company that is still in the process of growing or otherwise would have been dead. So as you go through this, what will you do? If you want to work with us and one of our team, just email contact at heavenandbusiness.com or jump onto heavenandbusiness.com backslash about and you'll see some of the people that we know and that we trust that we walk in 100% Christ-centered, 100% business and 100% kingdom advancing. You have a great week and we'll talk with you next time.